Okay. Okay, so uh Delek everyone. Uh, so how do you say Tashi Delek in Jewish? Shalom. Shalom. Okay. Shalom. <laughs> Mm, I'm so happy to uh, be, come back uh, to Israel. Uh, beautiful place, good food, um, and then so many, so many complaints uh, or so many compliments. Everything is there, but. I, the last time I come, I really enjoy, and uh, and even though <clears throat> uh, yeah, my teachings or uh, lecture or class maybe not uh, very uh, beneficial at that time, but. You know, my motivation, it's something that I can see and feel that uh, came when the, the plane took off from Delhi to Israel, then my motivation is whatever I will just say to you all, may there is a benefit. So that's how my my plan take off and with my motivation. And uh, so now this uh, also has same uh, kind of motivation. I came here uh, from my benefit to enjoy the hummus and the pita. <laughs> <laughs> Then the more of the, the main reason here is to uh, share uh, some kind of a, um, uh, the knowledge I normally appreciate and um so איך אנחנו עם האנגלית? יש כאלה שמוצאים את האנגלית מסובכת? זה בסדר אם אומרים פה שימשיך קצת באנגלית ואז מתישהו נעבור לטיבטית? כן, אז אומרים שזה סוף ה... גוד, גוד. כן, סוף ה... אני אנגלית היא מאוד אנגלית, אז אין בעיה. אז שירים את ה... the knowledge that uh, I uh, normally what I practice, which I get it from my teachers, and uh, time to time I always get the opportunity to receive uh, wonderful teachings and advice from His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Uh, and then uh, these kind of things really sometimes uh, helps me if I'm going through some kind of a uh, difficult time. And we all uh, have a good day and bad day. So uh, the good day is to make a good preparation what is coming on the bad day. So, uh, then once you feel like prepared, then it's more like, let it come. I can, I have a kind of strength to overcome this problem. So this kind of, uh, this so-called mind training is really needed each and every corner of the world, and especially 
like the, in here is Israel. It is, uh, the country is really advanced on technology and education, health, everything is so good. Like, look at Israel, it's like a pretty kind of desert, but what the people of the Israeli has done so much, and uh, uh, just thinking about the drinking water, I come from Meglodganj, Dharamsala. Many people of you have been there. Uh, we have a mountain, snow mountain, uh, behind us. And then we have a very heavy monsoon. But we still have a water problem. <laughs> <laughs> you all are here. Not much access of water, but you turn something, the seawater into drinking water. Incredible. But still, we, you all have a problem. Whether you shook your head or not, but there is a problem always. So, as His Holiness Dalai Lama always say, that the problem actually we always think it is coming from outside, but we always forget to look inside our mind. We are the kind of a, uh, Buddha himself said that we are the, our own protector. What this protector should do is, when the problem comes, we need to protect from it. So we are losing this kind of a coolness, or we can say awareness. But somehow, uh, many, many of you have this uh, kind of a seat, or some kind of a craving that even you have uh, like uh, develop uh, on the material uh, material uh, material level yeah material level material level uh, very high but somehow you feel like uh, you need to we need to improve our quality of mind so that's why we are here and uh, Dhamma Friends of Israel is giving this floor for us to study together. Uh, it happened many times, yeah, and I'm looking forward to uh, that a Dhamma Friend uh, can go on and uh, uh, invite wonderful teachers and then uh, you all can study, meditate, and most important, don't let other people tell you that Dharma is so good. You should, there should be one day that you have to feel it, that, oh, even I don't do so uh, very, practice so hardly, but I can feel there is a solution. Sometimes we feel like this is the only way now. And then you don't need to say, I'm a Buddhist, I do Buddhist practice. You become a strong for yourself, and then you go out there, whoever they need your help, starting with your family. And then one day, let your uh, loved one ask you a question. There's a huge change in your life. What is the secret recipe of that? Like, we st like our grandma has a secret recipe. <laughs> oh. 
and then she will tell you once that person really earned her trust. Then you will share it. So same thing. <clears throat> so here I'm uh, today to share a kind of a, a recipe that I don't know much how to cook it, but I kind of love the style how uh, it is made by Nagarjuna. Uh, and then due to the kindness of uh, Dhamma friends, uh, they requested me last time, we did, uh, during the pandemic, we did a one online course. Uh, what's that? Uh, Sutra of um, the movement of the death. Uh, we did that. If Dharma friend didn't say anything about it, maybe I have never heard of that sutra. And they're so kind, they say, if you can teach me on, uh, teach them through this text. So then I got to, just like, I become quite curious, what is that sutra? And then I looked, I felt like, this is so good. And uh, I need, I really need to practice this. So then the course went, uh, it is like I'm giving a class or teaching, but I'm focused towards myself to hold this opportunity, me to learn. You know the secret why I'm trying to do that? Because if uh, Dhamma friends say like, it's so good, you read it, I'm not going to read it. If my teachers say it's really good, you read it, I'm not going to do it, I'm so lazy. But now, this is a kind of flow that uh, I got a, a kind of a, a, a flow that I can offer some kind of a contribution. And then I, I'm a little bit smart. I thought like, well, I cannot let this opportunity go because that's like a, a double benefit. Once also I can benefit them, uh, the people who uh, participate, I can benefit them, and most benefit, I will get it too. So, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the last the time it happened like this, and also uh, this year, when Dharma friends, last year, isn't it? Last year, this year? Last year, I think. You re last year, probably. Last year, when uh, they asked me to come here and give a course, and then they brought up the, this uh, uh, precious uh, teaching by Nagarjuna, uh, Dharma uh, dream uh, tale. And then I never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's quite a, quite a rare uh, this practice teaching. And then before saying yes or no, oh. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so before saying or accepting the request. I looked into this text and it really kind of, I can say, it took my heart away. It's like I've fallen in love with this. It's hard to say how I've got to fall in love. It's like the, in, a, in a kind of relationship. Like if I don't get it, I will regret it. I need it so badly. And then um, I looked it a few times because for a long time I'm researching 
on the how to generate uh, bodhicitta. Uh, and then uh, normally we <coughs> we say uh, two kind of lineage to generate bodhicitta. One is the, uh, from the uh, uh, from the lineage of extensive practice, uh, and then samutta and from the lineage of profound view. Uh, uh, the so the trunk the lapsh na jiru. Jiran di na de ho di na hebrew na sungguh ba. Jezangga tanda jajin cuju di na lo ne so ta cangju gusem je jo kol sungguh yore di na lo ne ane cangju gusem je dan tel ya kunci menga dunju kon sem je dan cik ane tashin nyam je ju kon sem je dan ni sung bi na lo ne. Ani cikgu tu jawab macam cikgu nama saya Jun Dene. Tapi ni macam cikgu kau ni, ane sem kedang tu, jangan kau buat cerita pe, tu pembuih buat cerita tu sungguh tua. Jangan kata di mana cikgu, tapi ni macam cikgu kau ni suka dia tu. Ani cikgu, jadi mengapa dunia kau ni suka dia tu? Tapi tu cikgu tak kumpul tak cikgu. Tanda, kata suri, sungguh kasih kasih nana jeju yore. Tapi ina yang dili ya mixe suri cik, yang tanah cik, kom tap, yang di tholan jeje dar tholing cik ni pekombur. Tapi kesan dua suri cik di jeber wah, sung di jeber kabla, tapi ina luar ya. Ani kunci mengapa dengi rumput di di ini dah sungguh mendu de, di ina luar dua suri cik, sebab suri cik tuan tu tambe. Oh, orang yang kumpul dulu juga, tentu juga kumpul sih. Ani nyam lenze, tentu juga cuma itu sampai. Tadi orang orang tu di tahu je aja, dan di lalu terasa macam ya, lomnya macam ya, tapi kita orang sangat cuma sangat sama sangat cenderung je. Ani tadi orang ni kelen je, ni kerana orang tu lalu siap siap kelen nanti waktu dia rujuk. אז רואים פה שהמשיך לדבר על התרגול של בודיצ'יטה שמוסבר בדרכים שונות, בשושלות שונות בבודהיזם. אז יש לנו, כשאנחנו מסתכלים על ה... אפשר לומר שני הסוגי השיעורים שהבודה לימד, אפשר לסווג אותם כשיעורים ששייכים לשושלת של התרגול, של התרגול הנרחב. העשיר, הנרחב, והשושלת שעוסקת בהשקפה שהיא השפקה, השקפה מעמיקה. כאשר אנחנו עוסקים בתרגול של בודיצ'יטה, אנחנו רוצים לטפח את הבודיצ'יטה, לכונן את הבודיצ'יטה, והתרגול הזה מוסבר באריכות בשושלת שעוסקת בתרגול הנרחב. וכאן יש לנו שתי טכניקות עיקריות. לטפח את הבודיצ'יטה, לכונן את הבודיצ'יטה. התרגול הראשון נקרא באנגלית The Seven Fall Cause and Effect Personal Instructions או שבעת השלבים של גורם ותוצאה או גורמים ותוצאה שמובילים לכינון הבודיצ'יטה. והתרגול השני נקרא באנגלית Equalizing and Exchanging Self for Others או השוואה והחלפה של עצמי באחרים. כבוד הדלאי למה מדגיש בשיעורים שלו, אפשר לומר שרוב האנרגיה או העיסוק הוא בתרגול של השוואה והחלפה של עצמי באחרים. והתרגול הזה הוא מאוד very useful, או מאוד שימושי. אז רוב הפוקוס, רוב, ה, רוב העוצמה אפשר לומר, רוב, ה, רוב העיסוק הוא בתרגול הזה. יש טקסטים מסוימים שעוסקים בתרגול השני של תהליך של שבעה שלבים של גורמים ותוצאה, אבל הטקסטים האלה, למרות שהם מסבירים את התרגול הזה, במובן, במובן מסוים אפשר לומר שהיא 
הם מתרגלים, מגלים פחות עניין בתרגול הזה, פחות עניין. יש פחות שעוסקים בתרגול הזה, שמודדים בתרגול הזה, יותר, זה פחות נפוץ, יותר rare, יותר נדיר למצוא מתרגלים שמתרגלים את זה. וכאן רימפוט שקושר את התיאור הזה למה שאנחנו מוצאים פה בטקסט, שאנחנו הולכים ללמוד עם רימפוט שבימים הקרובים, Dream Tell, סיפור, סיפור החלום. הטקסט הזה לא בצורה, באופן ישיר, אבל באופן די ברור, נראה שהוא מדגיש את התרגול של שבעת השלבים. אז הוא קודם כל מסביר את ההשקפה, את דרך המחשבה של נגרג'ונה. את ההשקפה שלו, את התרגול של נגרג'ונה, ואנחנו, רימבוט שאומר שהוא הולך ללמד את זה, אנחנו הולכים להקשיב ולהתדיין בנושא הזה, אז אנחנו ברי מזל, very fortunate, שאנחנו, יש לנו את ההזדמנות, הזדמנות לעסוק בטקסט שעוסק בתרגול של שבעת השלבים. תודה. Now, why uh, Bodhijida is very important. Uh, so, we should ask this question. Uh, sometimes, when we, I think it's a great advantage for like people like you, uh, this will come. Why should I practice Dharma? And this is a very healthy question, I say. Because normally, if you tell a, a Tibetan family to uh, why you are practicing Dharma, and they don't have much, uh, very maybe, kind of a good answer to that. But they feel like, yeah, it's necessary. We need to do it. I call it, this is kind of a like staying in the environment where they say every day somebody says, nobody says why, and then it becomes so normal. And then, uh, but it's not that strong. It doesn't bring so much kind of a strength of the practice. But good influence is there, saying like, oh, don't kill the bugs, or don't steal, don't lie, all these sort of things are there, but, but they don't, they accept it before knowing the depth of the bodhicitta, the depth of the practice of the Buddha Dharma. That's why His Holiness recently when he gave a teaching and then he started, immediately he started the teaching with saying, the, bring a quotation of a Buddha saying, mm, me giving a blessing or kind of putting my hands on you that won't take away your uh, negative actions or emotions or the imprints of that. And having a, like a, a bath, uh, bath, bathing in the river Ganga, it will not uh, uh, take away your kind of imprint of uh, negative actions. Now, what I can do is, I will show you the path, and then you investigate it, and then you practice this. This is the way how uh, you get the happiness. So His Holiness says this. <laughs> then what I did, I kind of like uh, study that, and I give this kind of uh, like uh, teachings and classes. So um, I was walking in Dharamsala area, and then s right after the teaching, I went for a sacrament position. And then 
met a uh, few elderly Tibetan uh, uh, men and women. Uh, and then the one woman is like, uh, today special, very special teaching happened. Oh, so fortunate. And then <laughs> I kind of like in the mood to tease. And then I said, well, what did His Holiness say very special that you're praising him? And then she said, well, whatever the uh, teaching comes from his mouth is very special. And then I got like, well, now I know where he is going <laughs> with this. And then I was like, is there a specific thing that His Holiness today said it and then maybe you missed it? And then she said, oh, you have a big mouth. <laughs> maybe maybe you, you uh, learned something and maybe you put something in, on note. You, you say it. So then I brought the, this quotation that His Holiness said. And then she said, did you say something like this? Well, I didn't hear that. So that's very dangerous in the Tibetan community. That's why I'm saying people like you, you will not accept it like this. So you will try to investigate. You will think why. So this is uh, uh, so pure, so good to start with. So that's uh, I call a great hope is there. Uh, and now, if you ask me a question, why bodhicitta is very important, then answer could be. Uh, my answer will be quite simple because compassion is needed. Compassion uh, is the key to answer to the uh, happiness. Uh, if you want a happy life, Compassion is needed. In the English, we say self-compassion. But the, in the Tibetan, we don't have such uh, terminology called self-compassion. We s translate that sometimes into the renunciation. Uh, but in, a, in English, it's a kind of a nice word, loving yourself. Be uh, be kind to yourself. So, what does that mean? Be kind to yourself. So, the, the answer is like, um, you need a happiness. If you can give yourself a happiness, proper happiness, then it's, we call champa in the Tibetan, it's the kindness. So once you have, His Holiness Dalai Lama said very uh, strongly in a recent teaching of his, saying that compassion is a great because compassion is answer to the greatest question. I never heard of this kind of expression. expression. And he said it like in a very normal, very uh, straightforward. He said, people who maybe have like a kind of a, uh, wanting to get rid of the suffering, but if he does not have an answer to this, then it's just like a question only, no answer there. So once you know a method to overcome the suffering or get rid of the suffering, then you feel like, I can do it. I can deal with it. I can help others. So these are the answer. This is what we really need. Sometimes 
what our understanding of compassion would be something like if you see someone someone in a pro uh, in a problem or a difficult situation you say i have this pretty feelings towards other people but what to do there's like you the world is going crazy these days we can see there's non-stop war going on there are so many kind of a crisis going all over the world so sometimes we feel so helpless what to do so most sometimes maybe it hap- you feel helpless because we might not have the answer to that so the answer should be like it will it is a kind of a, a late if the whole thing is on a fire and you try to stop it but it's it is very necessary to bring the awareness before the fire started before the next fire started how to stop this then you will feel like you i can do it there is a way to do it that that is the hope we are looking for so today i am not going uh, through the text because today uh, it's a kind of most of a, we are meeting uh, new faces or new friends and uh, so it is necessary uh, to have a floor to know each other so that's why uh, the real the, the main text uh, i will start tomorrow morning uh, when the sun shines and then we start uh, but the the real essence of this teaching is to uh to become a kind of a, to know each other means like um it will here we talk about uh about the uh the quality of the sentient beings and then i say uh, this is a very good question for you maybe once you go back maybe you can think a little bit of this um, in here nagarjuna will uh talk at the kindness of uh sentient beings so great sentient being so great so great so great but then i have this in the mind saying like also we been uh, enemy to each other many times <laughs> how many times in the past life we have killed each other cheated each other but the great master here their their focus is on a positive level nothing on negative so that means um but our way of spending time focus is a little different mostly we spend much of time of hours on the negative sides not much paying attention to the the hope or the good qualities and here comes the the antidote called the emptiness i i love emptiness because of emptiness is a kind of a tool that helps you to shift you from that difficult position we are s- sitting 
and it can take you from that position to different position that then it will change your point of view or you can look from the different angle and then you will see oh my focus is on, on not on the negative side I'm looking from the uh, positive side because I need the positive energy not the negative energy we say that <laughs> so this is a very necessary very necessary we need to kind of I'm not saying just completely ignore the negative things just don't just close your eyes and then just say like I'm only uh, listening and uh, focusing on the good but also the bad or good but then when it you, you if you wanted to choose something then you have to choose the positive thing because we need a positive energy with us so if you look at the Nagarjuna's way of this writing maybe most of you did a homework on this this is so good so as a, as a class, it is necessary because you are spending a time and you are spending a money and energy here. So it is really necessary you read this. And uh, so in there, you will just see only the... Nagarjuna will not bring up his enemy there saying this, that person has been so unkind to me, ungrateful to me. He will never say this. It's he only fo his focus is on, on the positive side. And then when it comes to the emptiness, then he, uh, Nagarjuna will focus on so-called enemy, so-called friend, so-called Buddha, so-called Nirvana. If you, it looks like it uh, appears like a truly existence there. But then you, when we do like a, a research or investigate, there is no inherently existence of the one. You cannot find one single atom of uh, proof that it exists from its own. So why this? Why this? So that I, as I told you before, then you can build something. Then you can once you have this calm. And, uh, peaceful mind and then you can rethink refresh and then you can just look at the uh, there you can see oh because he harmed me I just call him an enemy as I if I harm him he can call me an enemy but he also did good to me, and that's why I call him my friend. So now with this kind of mind training, you go with your family and then say, yes, I had a difficult time with my partner or with my children, but I, will, I can never say they are my enemy. But from, from the negative side, how maybe they will use harsh words, and maybe there will some kind of uh, misunderstandings. So we can say like, the real enemy is in the, inside the house. <laughs> but you don't dare to say this, because the root of the compassion love is 
so rooted there. So similarly, then Nagarjuna will go through this kind of thing. And then he will teach us how to be strong with family and each and every time you meet with any kind of people in this world, how to react with them, how to respect them, he will teach this. So I call this is a great teaching. There are some parts, it sounds more like a, people who has a faith in past and future life. This is more something to do with uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism way of uh, belief or something. But the general idea, the general idea of, uh, as I said, how are you going to, going to deal with uh, the issues that we have in front of us? And that some kind of techniques are really needed to bring it down in our practice. And even it comes from Nagarjuna, then, uh, or Buddha, you don't need to have a kind of a faith in them. It's like you have your own kind of a intelligence. If somebody's saying really good, then you can say like, I love this idea. And then if it doesn't make much sense, then you can just feel like, well, it sounds good, but I don't know whether I can achieve this kind of thing, whether this is really helpful or not. Buddha said this, I am not making up, because Buddha himself said to his students proudly, he said, uh, if uh, you have visited Dharamsala, uh, his holiness temple. So there's a Buddha statue, and at the right side of the Buddha statue, there is the quotation of Buddha saying, oh, Bhikshu, uh, my students, uh, uh, as a goldsmith checks, uh, how he checks the gold, Cutting and rubbing and uh, I don't know what melting. Word, huh? melting melting and everything. How they check the gold? I also request you to check my words very carefully. Don't accept my words because uh, not because I'm a great person. Uh, that is the, I call, something Buddha said it very proudly, and uh, His Holiness is so fond of this. And then this is how His Holiness always said that almost now 40 years he's been uh, having a dialogue with scientists. At the beginning, there is a little bit of problem because of the, uh, there are some elderly senior monks that complains to His Holiness that, well, scientists does not believe in religion. And uh, somehow, they sometimes, uh, it's known as the killer of religion. So it is not a good idea to uh, make a, a kind of a dialogue with them. And then His Holiness looked at them and then said, well, the kind Buddha himself said, make the investigation. So now I have this kind of a confidence and uh, the, we should really meet the intelligent people of this world and then we can work together. And then now recent, Recent years, His Holiness will always tease 
uh, 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 us, actually. Uh, uh, he will say, well, now scientists uh, cannot kill the religion very easily, but sometimes we brought a lot of kind of a contradiction in the science <laughs> through the intelligence mind of the uh, how we debate, how we investigate. So, so many scientists are like thinking like, well, this way of investigation you do in uh, a debate courtyard, and this way of technique is really needed for us to study too. They said it to His Holiness. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of like a uh, football team. <laughs> There's like a, one goal from scientists, one goal from Buddhism. It's going like this. So, uh, so it's, uh, as Buddha said, make the investigation. So it is really necessary uh, that we, most of us, love to do uh, meditation. And uh, uh, meditation is really needed because I don't know how you, why you like meditation, but for me the meditation is uh, necessary. Uh, because um, there are so many wonderful things for past almost now 20, 25 years I've been uh, practicing, but then I felt like these and these things are really needed. I feel like without this, I will fail, fail again and again in my life. But I cannot just be strong like continuously because of my old habits, because of the distractions. So then uh, when meditation is, uh, when, we, when we talk about meditation, it's more the known as single-pointed meditation, shamatha. Uh, I, I, I know most of you tried shamatha. <laughs> and how long you can stay? Let's say 15 minutes. Go up or down? Uh, go down? Okay. <laughs> so like five minutes. Five minutes good? Okay. So five minutes. So same story. Because uh, uh, one great master said, how much uh, the strength of the, uh, the shamatha, uh, the clarity, when, the, when we talk about the single point of meditation, uh, the clarity should be also very, dear, very strongly there, needs to be there. Uh, when I talk about the clarity, it means like when if, if you have, um, if you are meditating on the object of the Buddha statue, and then you feel like I'm going to meditate on this Buddha statue as long as I want, uh, you maybe close your eyes, or sometimes you don't close your eyes, and you just try to stare it, it's not a meditation. Because the object, what we have, medita object of the meditation should be in your mind, not outside of the mind. So when it, it's so difficult to bring in this image, because uh, it's difficult, but not that difficult. Uh, I have a very good uh, kind of a Example, why it's not that difficult. Uh, are you ready to hear about this? Because we 
already have a practice called attachment. <laughs> so attachment, when you, if, you uh, if somebody says like, I want to have a practice of attachment, I'm going to fall in love with you, I can do that. For in order to have this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, meditation that we normally have, uh, biologically we have this. <laughs> so how this happens is, it comes with the information, saying like, oh, so good, this is so really nice. Like Apple company doing the business. Why they are making so much kind of advertisement and they, how they say it. They are so professional, like, and also Samsung and oh, so many. <laughs> so, more information you added in there, into this practice, then there would be a day that you can say, it's enough now, I can focus it. I don't need anything else, I really need this one. So similarly, this great master said, like the attachment and the anger is the one of the perfect example for us that when we are so focused, anything around you is happening, you won't pay any attention. You are so fixed here. So, with, without any information, how are you going to become angry? Without any information, how are you going to bring the attachment? So like this, we need, before going into the single point of meditation, we need to have some clarity or the information of the object that, uh, uh, which we are going to meditate on. So, now, uh, for, for, for three, uh, two, two days, for two days, we are going to talk about bodhicitta. So, now we can, uh, normally, this, some uh, masters say the practitioner who, uh, especially people who are doing shamatha kind of practice, shouldn't change the object, the, the, the focus yeah, object, the of, focal object, of focal object of meditation. You shouldn't change uh, much. So you should be stay fixed. So whatever you are meditating on, but as an information, this is so good. So if you can bring this information and then put it to like what kind of your teacher, your parents, or I don't know whoever you want to put it there. Like if you put a, like a Buddhist object as your the focal object, then Look at this uh, dream tale, how Nagarjuna brings uh, Buddha as a, his meditation object. It's so good because he says, I did kind of investigation on the sentient beings, how they are so kind, and uh, when, whenever I am there, some people uh, are so kind, some people like this, that, but every time I can see some kind of a kindness in them. And then he kind of says, these uh, practices done by Buddha himself and given this to us. So Buddha helped, Buddha went through this kind of a practice and Buddha taught and gave this kind of teaching to us. So I'm so grateful to the Buddha. So this is how he makes the Buddha very strong. 
And that's what I like about Nagarjuna. Not going to say, oh, Buddha is really important. He is an omniscient one. You should believe him. Not like this. First, he gives all the reasons. He makes kind of, kind of a connection of what you are doing and what, where it comes from and why this is so necessary. And all this comes from the teaching of the Buddha. So then uh, we can say this kind of faith, this kind of love towards Buddha is without an attachment. Because you have a good reason, enough reason to, to support your point why you respect Buddha. So we will talk more about this uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, hmm. so most of uh, in, is there any new uh, to the Buddhism that uh, or most of you already are one? There's one, two. Okay. Yay, no way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a two, two, three. Okay, great. So, a tip for you two. Don't become Buddhist immediately. Uh, first, please take the baby step. Give yourself a time. Don't let other people brainwash you. <laughs> there are so many things, as I said before, that why I should practice this. And then if you could say, it's so necessary, it's so needed, that's why I'm practicing this. This is good enough. You don't need to say, I'm a Buddhist. I'm following this path. Because these days, many people get kind of freak out when they say, I'm following this religion. <laughs> and because people are losing mind these days, like many, like especially in this country here, Jewish. And, and now, uh, it's hard to get a good practitioner <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> to be honest. And then, uh, if you kind of convert there and here, and then looking for... <laughs> so that sometimes, it brings kind of a tension in the family. So, as I said before, when I wake up in the morning, sometimes if I'm in a mood to practice, then I will just wake up and then say, why should I meditate? Why should I take a refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha? And am I doing it because I need to do it? I must do it? And then it's pressure. There's no joy. Then I try to find, just in the laying in the bed, I will just think, try to think like, okay, this is another reason to stand up and do the prostration. Then I wake up and make a prostration to Buddha and then I feel so lucky and so fortunate to practice this. So sometimes I didn't get it, then I go back to sleep. <laughs> Not a good practitioner, but it's healthy. It's healthy for me. <laughs> because I have seen so many things in my life. Now, I'm in my 40s. <laughs> Actually, 39. 
So <laughs> not yet 40. So the rest of my life, I met so many people. And I come from a, a background of people who call a practitioners. And then sometimes I, I don't get kind of a, a good influence. Maybe I'm not getting it right, but somehow I don't get this right answer from the practitioners. So then I felt like I need to practice, but not like that. I wanted to have the right idea. And then I, uh, I try to uh, check with my, my teachers. And, and then it is, it's a, this is, a, as I uh, shared with you, that's to you, with you two, because you are two are the, uh, new, new to the, uh, this uh, path. So then when I meet my teachers and I have these questions, I wanted to do this, but I don't see some connection. I don't feel this is kind of the right way because it's not benefiting uh, for me. And then how to think about this. So then, I, according to this, I find my teachers. And then it, to talk with them. And I sometimes say to some close friends that first you need to find a good friend in your teacher. And then once you see this, this friend is something like, oh, he can help me so much. Then according to this, then you will uh, put one more gear and then one more step ahead that like, he has this particularly quality that I am really looking for. And then wish, just sit, staying with him, I will get immense benefit. And then this great master uh, in Tibet, he uh, said, Tome Sambo, in his uh, the 37 practices of Bodhisattva, he gave the define, uh, define, define definition of um, good friend or the uh, teacher, the spiritual friend. spiritual friend. And he said, without making any effort, he said it, without making any effort, you just stay with him. And all the qualities are, uh, somehow it is effortlessly, it's coming to you. Then he is your spiritual friend. That's what he said. How lovely this, that is. And then slowly you find some kind of a hint or some kind of sign of bodhicitta in him. Then you look for Buddhicitta. Then you have, at that time, you have to see him as a Bodhisattva. And sometimes you see him as a Buddha, or so on. But some, some people don't get this kind of idea, but then they automatically go to <laughs> the teaching and receive the kind of uh, initiations. And then, and then I have so many friends in a difficult situation. Like I took this, and then let's, there's so much commitments, and then so on and so on. Now I don't know what to do. It's difficult. So, 
most of you already know. Uh, I don't need to say this because you already studied, you know. But for few of you here are kind of new, so I'm sharing this. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, people maybe already uh, are a practitioner. Maybe this kind of what I just said could be helpful. <laughs> so please keep this in your mind. And uh, um, is it 20 more minutes I need to push. <laughs> Kill the time. <laughs> So whatever kind of practice you do, no doubt, you need, really need to enjoy that. And that is something uh, we say, uh, when, when I say enjoy that, it doesn't mean like the ordinary the way that we enjoy. It's the enjoyment that you feel like these and these things is really necessary for me when you see this. Then automatically you feel this is, I need it. Then there are so many kinds of uh, uh, procedures, uh, steps. Then you need to find, I, I can sense, I can feel this and this can get me towards this. But I cannot, I don't have any hint, and my teacher doesn't give me any kind of hint where this is going or leading towards. But unless I don't get it, I'm not going to buy it. This is good. This is called invest, investigation. <laughs> so, and then, uh, this is not only like people like us, so many great masters also went this, through this kind of investigation. And then uh, oh, maybe uh, most of you heard of the, the four schools, and especially the four tenets. Sorry, no, the four tenets. Tenets. Why it's there? Why, why uh, Buddha make this complicated towards us? <laughs> For me, uh, it's uh, really hard to explain the fountain. It's very, uh, what do we call it, uh, step by step. But it's, Buddha said it's so necessary. And then he gave a kind of a, uh, answer to that, why there are four, not five. Because if this four uh, tenets system is uh, practiced very well by one uh, individually, and then he will know which kind of antidote, which is the, the emptiness, is so suitable for that person. Maybe, maybe we, we talk a little bit more in our coming uh, class. Most importantly, uh, uh, when you go back to your room, uh, please uh, spend a few time <laughs> with the Nagarjuna and uh, go through the verse. And it is not necessary to understand by word by word. Even I don't know how to explain it word by word. And uh, we haven't found the commentary on this yet. So uh, don't expect 
too much. <laughs> but whatever you like, there's something. I'm 100% sure there's some kind of verse that can, when you read it, you feel like, this sounds so good. And this is the kind of a, a hint. This is kind of a, a kind, you found the key. Now you really need to unlock. Uh, like uh, uh, Melodimus said in one of his uh, poems, or a poem, yeah, uh, good spiritual, like, songs. spiritual songs. Uh, many masters, the great masters, we say there are so many kind of Buddhas who will help me to, to uh, go on the path. But the real Buddha really helped me is the inside of me, which I believed to the uh, uh, having the faith in law of causality. And then thinking about this, it really moved me to this uh, uh, position where he is standing now. That's what he said. So if you read any kind of great masters, there is some kind of particularly uh, kind of a uh, way how they get into uh, practice. So, like, like, it is not only for the uh, for the great masters, for all of us. Some are like here, like I really want to practice. But some can be like, well, there's something happening. Uh, should I go? Mm, then maybe say, no, no, you go. Maybe one said, I, I wanted to go, but it's so good, maybe you should try. So he, she or he is there. Or something, something happens. I, we don't know why this kind of, sometimes we call it, what a coincidence. Something without any kind of causes and condition, it comes like this. But we don't see this kind of how the, the uh, kind of uh, the flow of this uh, connection happens. But now you are already here. You are in this circle. And now we are going to talk about bringing peace into the world. It's not like we found the peace and we will just go out and sell the peace to others. <laughs> it's more like you find the peace in yourself and then you can go out there and you can make other people strong and the which what the best example is yourself many people what we, they do is they go to the centers teachings and do practice even they do 6 7 year retreats come out and then they will, they will be same, same actually, sometimes worse. <laughs> and that's not a really good message. Because I have a friend, his father, uh, the, his father is a, a kind of a, uh, before I used to say, a great practitioner. Because he wakes up very, very early in the morning, around like uh, four o'clock, and then it's very uncomfortable for me because I'm a respect person in their home, like uh, they will show me, it's like uh, the real Buddha is here or some, something. They will give me 
the special room and the, and then a special bed and then nobody can sleep uh, only me and I have my private uh, bathroom and then I will just wake up around seven o'clock <laughs> but he wakes up at four, four o'clock he's the, my friend's uh, father and he has a very deep voice just go like doing these uh, commitments and uh, sadhanas just so powerful and I feel sometimes very ashamed <laughs> And one or two days, then I become like a rock. Oh, no, whatever he do, let him do. I don't care. <laughs> so a few years later, what happened? He really wanted his children to practice, study Buddhism. And he uh, is giving kind of a hint to me to tell his kid to study. And then I pretend like, I don't know. And, uh, and then he's uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, son and uh, three daughter sat on the ta uh, around the table and then start having a breakfast. And then that day, because I'm already there, and they came like 30 minutes late, uh, having a late night party. And one boy is still like having a hangover. And then he was, the, he's a very dominant person. And then he, uh, the father looked at his son and said, well, Rinpoche is here. It's a really good opportunity to practice Dharma. <laughs> he showed this face. <laughs> then, the person who is, the, the son who is still in hangover looked in his father and said, you've been doing so much practice. Tell me what's the benefit of doing the uh, Dharma practice. And it is like a sorry, Lenloba. It's the re, like, like a revenge or, you know, it was talking back to it. Talk, to, talking back to straight back to it. it hurt his ego, ego, the father. And then he said like, he looked, the father looked at me and I pretend like I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then father starts scolding his child, said, well, I told you this is a good opportunity, and I am, my duty is to tell you this. If, if you don't show any interest, maybe you don't want to do it, then don't do it. That's it. That was the, like the full stop. And then later, after two days later, uh, one of their sons came to see me and said, I have a question for you. And I was so happy that he's son, one son is interested, and then I was so ready to, uh, to receive his question. And then he said, well, my father is doing some kind of a practice that makes uh, our family life very, very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> So I've, I was like, well, go on, what's, what's really happening? And then he said, uh, he does this practice early in the morning, and then he will sit in the, uh, the shrine room until like 10.30, he will do lots of kind of readings and commitments and do kind of meditation. Each and every day, he becomes more, 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 more angry, more angry. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't say like directly that his father is doing something wrong because I don't want to get into this kind of trap. So then one day when I was giving a talk to the family, and then I, uh, said that the practice 
if you're not really enjoying this, you should stop it. And then ask the question, is this really helping me or not? If this is not really helping me, then you should ask two questions. One question should be, maybe I'm taking this a wrong way. Maybe I'm not getting it. Or one thing, you can also think, maybe there's something wrong with the task. Only do two. So start investigating this. So I couldn't change the father, but actually I, I'm quite successful changing, kind of bringing improvement in his son who asked this question. And now what? His son is giving kind of a, a solid teaching to his father, and now his father sees some change, uh, big changes in his. But the, the funny thing is, he's not, not going to give any credit to his son. <laughs> because still the ego is there. But it doesn't matter. But he, he's much more calmer, and he listens to the problem of the situation, what is happening in the family, and he smiles more. And before he used to be super rich, now he's not that rich. And he's in now his 70s. He's very calm. Like, There's no kind of king in this world like always sit very rich. And they need to come down and then go up. This is the, the way how the life is. So he is fitting into this kind of reality. So uh, now not being like a super rich as before, uh, but he is really uh, adjusting into the reality. So the, the huge benefit is he can see in himself. So that's the, uh, something that I wanted to share with you all. Um, so if you start doing a practice which you like it very much, and then you will know what you're doing where you are getting to, all this. So no, you, you don't uh, kind of need some uh, kind of a, like a, uh, <laughs> there, there won't be not much of confusion. Uh, otherwise, like uh, as I talked with some people, like uh, even you study a lot, and but you didn't enjoy your studies as much, and forget about the practice, and then during the time of the retreat, it's like you just count. I did. Uh, First, maybe uh, two weeks, body strength, mind strength, both are there. <laughs> then body strength is good, the mind strength goes down. <laughs> and then what happens is, when I will finish, so that really comes. And the, Next to my uh, place, there's one monk, very, very, very nice monk. He's doing the prostration and he's doing like a 1,500 only. And then this is the limit. He does not go up and down. This is what he enjoys the most. And then he does the, his meditation and he reads, and then he tried to think and smile, and so, so nice. 
And I am the, the, the next, his friend is, is me. I am doing like 3,500 uh, prostitutions a day because so rush. I wanted to do it. So I wanted to finish it. So actually, I can say I didn't enjoy it as that person enjoyed his practice. So then he become like a kind of my indirect kind of a teacher to set an example. Next time if I do a prostitution, I wish I can do like him. So this we really need to keep in our mind that goes all the, to the point Whatever you do, are you really enjoying it? And what does it mean enjoying? So, today we stop here. It's nine and plus one minute. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow, uh, Tomorrow is, mm, 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 mm. oh, you all have the schedule. You know the schedule, right? So um, the, the class, my class will be from, Google Comet Yeah, 9.15. I want to okay, 9.15, okay. So I will see you at 9.15 then. Okay, so. Uh, in order to enjoy the, our class, the tip will be, please do your homework. Uh, get a little bit familiar with what we are going to talk about. Because this is my experience. Sometimes I go to my class to receive teachings from a teacher, and if I didn't do my homework, and I'm there, and then he, my teacher would just go on talking, 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 and I go like, oh, what he's talking about? <laughs> but then when I did my kind of a work, homework, and then he start talking, talking, I go like, yeah, I know what he's talking, but I don't see kind of a, a link between this. Then I go with, raise my hand, and my teacher likes it. And like, ha ha, somebody did his homework. So same, same thing, right? So please do a little homework for me, and I will do my homework. And let's meet here for tomorrow to discuss about bodhicitta, and also known as compassion. Thank you very much, everybody, and good night.